All right, so once we have the requirements, we can actually start designing the five information system components of our new system. So we are figuring out the hardware, the software, the database, the procedures, and the people or the job definitions. Um, so I'll go briefly through every single one of those components, uh, but I really want to emphasize here that we're not building anything yet. This is more figuring out specifically for each component what we need in order for the uh, system to actually work, what we need from each component in order to meet the requirements for this system. So that is the idea of this uh, phase of the SDLC. For hardware, most of the time we're looking at existing solutions. So for example, if we need a server to store a database on, are we building something in-house or are we hosting something in the cloud? Uh, if people need computers to run certain pieces of software, what specifications do those computers need to be? We might be looking at different alternatives of pre-built hardware. So like, can we get the, the base model generic office Windows computer for everyone who is using the software? Or does this require a very powerful CPU or graphics card or a lot of RAM or something like that in order to run a more computationally taxing program? That's the kind of questions that are typically being asked in hardware design. Most of the time, you're not building custom hardware, so you're not designing a new CPU. Uh, God forbid you're designing a new CPU because that would be extremely tricky. Um, or you're not usually building a custom like embedded computer with maybe pre-built components, but you are designing the actual um, connections between all the components themselves. Like usually none of that stuff is happening depending on the business, but I would say most of the time you're not worried about any of that custom design. It's more what platform are we running our system on and can we use like the cloud or should we use uh, servers for certain aspects of it or should we use our own servers for everything, all that kind of stuff. Software might be comparing different off-the-shelf software to see pros and cons of using each one, to see what um, benefits you would get from using each one versus maybe the places that they are lacking that you would have to compensate for if you were using that particular software. Uh, so you might be comparing different off-the-shelf software for that purpose, you might also be looking at building your own software or outsourcing to a team that will build custom software for you. Uh, this could also involve questions about the cloud. So, you know, are we doing some operation on the cloud? If so, what cloud-based software are we using? Are we going to do some platform as a service thing? Are we going to do some infrastructure as a service thing and set up a whole custom environment? All that kind of stuff. You might get into that if you're using some wild predictive machine learning type of operation to say, identify uh, patterns in consumer data to predict um, Feature load or something like that. Like you could consider all that kind of stuff, but you could also possibly consider using an ERP or an EAI or something like that. So you're looking at all these different options between off the shelf and custom software, between in-house and outsourcing if you're doing custom software, right? Uh, you're looking at all these different options in order to figure out what the best software to use is in order to meet the requirements. Now, of course, with the actual software itself, if you are designing the software or if you're hiring someone to do the software, you might actually need to design a lot of the specifications. So a lot of the different 
protocols that you have to use or different inputs and outputs that you have to work with. Um, security also is going to be huge in software. It's pretty important in the hardware side of things as well. There are hardware aspects of security, but software is a huge point where security needs to be considered. So security specifications for software, all that kind of stuff. Um, when you're actually designing it or building or paying someone else to design it custom for you, you need all of those specifications determined in the component design stage. With the data side of things, when you're designing the data component, you're pretty much designing what the database will look like. So, hey, are we using a relational database? Are we using some NoSQL abomination? Or are we doing something else? Um, you might also look at what data are we taking in? What attributes of the data do we need to pay attention to? What metadata do we need in order to easily work with the data? Because the, the metadata itself is going to be really important, especially if you have software interfacing with the data from the database. That software has to be able to use the metadata in order to get the right pieces of data. So getting all of those ideas ahead of time before you actually start designing and or before you start creating the database is really important. So you want to put thought into what the database will actually look like. The procedures design is, I think, pretty straightforward. You are uh, figuring out how people should interact with the system in order to actually uh, be able to work with it. So you have your requirements that say, you know, this is what the system needs to be able to do. Designing the procedures involves figuring out, okay, given the system that we are building, how will users be able to fulfill those requirements when they use it? How will they interact with the system in order to get whatever information that they need or do whatever computation they need or whatever? And procedures will also involve security procedures. So figuring out who has access to what, how you're going to update that access uh, in terms of you know, the database and the programs and all that kind of stuff, how you're going to update that as job descriptions change, as people change, all that kind of stuff. Security procedures are also in the designing the procedures side of things. And then you will design the people side of the information system by defining what jobs the people that interact with the system will have. So you define like, okay, this is the position that needs to work with this part of the information system. Here are the responsibilities they will have. Here is the experience they will need in order to effectively do this job. And you'll define all of these different jobs for every piece of the information system where a person is needed. Now, these might be existing job definitions. So if there already is a uh, marketing executive or something like that who has to do some piece of the puzzle, then you would use that job as you know you, you use that job definition for the information system but then you might need a particular um, technician of sorts who does a very specific role that isn't really seen elsewhere in the company and you might have to define the job um, pretty uh, you know you'd have to make it from scratch and you'd have to define everything in as much detail as necessary in order in order for say hiring managers to know this is exactly what we need in a candidate so you're defining what is needed for a person to successfully fulfill that role in the information system sort of in the same way that you're doing with all the other components you're defining what is needed for each of those components to 
fulfill the requirements. In this case, it's what is needed from a person who was hired on for this job in order for their work to fulfill the requirements for this system. And here also is where security really comes into play because you need to identify how sensitive the pieces that they are working with are. Maybe they're working with uh, data pretty closely if they're managing the database or they're doing a lot of work with sensitive data or something like that. Um, defining, hey, this job this uh, job will require working with very sensitive data um, and figuring out how to make sure that a person in that job won't mess up. You know, there's the procedures that try to limit a person accidentally messing up, but you also, in the job definition, want to make sure that, like, hey, we're hiring on people who know how to work with this stuff safely, and also we're doing background checks for them. Like, defining all that kind of stuff in here will be really important. So that's the component design. Once we finish this piece, we know exactly what we need from each component of the information system. We know what pieces we're going to create by ourselves. We know what pieces we're going to grab from elsewhere. And we'll be able to actually get started building this thing, which is the next phase. So we finish component design with the full design of the system that is ready to go into production.